There is ketchup dripping down the wall, and there's a shattered porcelain plate on the floor. The valet had articulated that the president was extremely angry at the attorney general's AP interview and had thrown his lunch against the wall, um, which was causing them to have to clean up. So I, I grabbed a towel and started wiping the catch up off of the wall to help the valet out. Um, and he said something to the effect of, he's really ticked off about this. I, I would stay clear of him for right now. He, he's really, really ticked off about this right now. And Ms. Hutchinson, was this the only instance that you are aware of where the president threw dishes? It's not. How many more such incidents did you experience there? <laughs> there are uh, several, and that's probably being a little too uh, underestimating mm -hmm. a little too much, Lawrence. But out of all of the reasons that Donald Trump should never be anywhere close to the Oval Office again, this may seem like a minor one, but his volcanic temper, he deserves to be nowhere near a, the nuclear code button. So I think that... You know, for Americans listening to this and to know that how he reacts so irrationally mm -hmm. to things that his own handpicked attorney general are, is telling him that is the truth. You know, I think that we should let the ketchup be splayed on the walls at Mar-a-Lago, and I'm sure there's plenty of it down there nowadays. Uh, last night, uh, Donald Trump said he will be uh, a dictator on day one. Do you think he'll be a dictator on day two? I think Donald Trump poses an extreme threat to American security and American prosperity. I think that Donald Trump, a vote for Donald Trump is a vote for a fascist government. I think Donald Trump prioritizes authoritarian rule over rule of law. And yes, I mean, Donald Trump has told us who he is for years and years. So for him to even joke about being a dictator, we need to believe what he says. Everybody needs to believe what he says. And we have seen that this is the trajectory that it's going in. There are constitutional experts that have seen that this is the, the direction that it's going in. And I think Americans also need to understand just how fragile our democracy is. We almost lost our democracy and our constitutional republic on January 6th. And the only reason we didn't is because there were good people in the government that helped it survive. I don't think that we would have that same scenario again. The, um, the, there was a leak of sorts of the, a witness list in the uh, Georgia prosecution of Donald Trump, uh, headlined by former Vice President Mike Pence, former Attorney General William Barr, Acting Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen, uh, Apity, Acting Deputy Attorney General Richard Donahue, uh, Republican Congressman Scott Perry, who you know, uh, Steve Bannon, the governor of Georgia, obviously the Secretary of State of, of Georgia. Uh, everyone assumes you're on this list and, and Fawny Willis has so told you. Uh, well, everybody assumes, Lawrence. <laughs> um, oh, as we have discussed before, if slash when I am asked to testify in any of the trials, I will do so not only out of a legal and moral obligation to the courts and our legal system, but I also believe that it's a duty that I owe to the American people. The American people need to know what happened and the American people need to be able to make judgments for themselves. I hope that all of these people on the new list would comply fully with their subpoenas and to testify truthfully. I have some doubts about a few of them just because of their if passed as precedent, then, you know, I think that they will try to stiff arm, which is unfortunate for our system and is completely selfish and they should be nowhere near power. But that's what we also need to focus on in 2024 is electing responsible, good, trustworthy people to hire office to make sure that we can preserve our country. What did you feel on the day that your former direct boss in the White House Mark Meadows got indicted in Georgia. Mark has had a lot of opportunities to do what the right thing is and what I call the right thing, and that's to testify truthfully. There was nobody that was closer to Donald Trump in that era 
than Mark Meadows. And I've hoped for a really long time that Mark has been testifying not only to DOJ, but to any and every government body. It was honestly, it was really difficult to see him get indicted because he, you know, he, I did work for him. He is a father. He's a grandfather. But he's, in my opinion, he still has an opportunity to do the right thing. He doesn't have to continue following in Donald Trump's shadow. He can be tr- truthful and forthcoming and tell the people, the courts and the American people what he knows. And I I just hope that he keeps that in mind as these cases start to unfold. Do, do you have any uh, words of guidance from your own experience with her about how our audience should be receiving what Liz Cheney is now telling us? I think Liz Cheney's book is one of the most profound works of American literature in our time. And I think that it will be studied for generations to come, just as we study many books in our founding documents in grade school on forward. Not only is Liz Cheney one of the most courageous, selfless and resilient American patriots, but she is laying out facts like very few people have been willing to do. It's an indictment of the Republican Party. It's an indictment of many of the Republicans currently in Congress. You know, I think that every American, whether they're a Democrat, Republican, independent, owe it to Liz Cheney and owe it to our country to read her book and read it with an open eye because what she's saying is the truth. And she knows better than anybody else how fragile our country is. And what she is giving us is a warning. And the closing words of her book are, this is the cause of our time. I truly believe that, and I think that every American needs to come to terms with that as well.